I had a day off last month, and I watched three episodes of Bargain Hunt back to back on the sofa in my pants. I have no qualms about telling you this. When I was 19, in my first general election, I voted for Margaret Thatcher. Still no shame. It gets worse. On Sunday, I ate an entire bag of ready-washed lettuce. Couldn't stop myself, and I'm now worrying that I've got dangerously addictive tendencies. I have no problem putting any of this on the record, but now I'm going to tell you something that is very, very hard to say in public. Big breath. I am deeply introverted. I worship in a very noisy church. I do a job which encourages people to talk enthusiastically about their faith. I live in a country where calling someone the life and soul of the party is a compliment, and I'm an end of the scale introvert. It's not good, is it? Well, it is good. I've only become reconciled to it in recent years. I've recognised it as a God-given thing. It's a gift to use well, and I'm going to spend eight minutes saying how I'm trying to use it well, and how, despite years of looking at my friends bubbling in social settings and wishing I could be like that, I'm starting to enjoy it for what it is. People tend to say to me, "Introvert? Surely not. You're not shy." Yeah, I know I'm not shy. That's not the same thing. Give me a microphone and a green belt audience. I'm as happy as can be. Introverts are often good speakers because it's so important to them that others enjoy themselves. One of their traits is to scan the room, looking for hints that it might be going badly, so they know when to bring in a bit of emergency humour. A joke. How do you know if an introvert fancies you? He stares at your shoes instead of his own. <laughs> oh, it's going even worse than I thought. <laughs> being introvert isn't just being shy or sensitive. Whether you're introvert or extrovert depends on what exhausts you and what makes you raring to go. When you get back from a party, are you thinking? That was great, and I wish it could have gone on twice as long. Or are you thinking that was fine, but now I'm flaked out from the effort of giving out and relieved to be back home? And if you're thoroughly introvert, at some point you'll have been tempted to skip the party altogether and stay home playing online Scrabble with a woman from Merthyr Tydfil who identifies herself only as Big Belinda. <laughs> oh yes. So then, how to be an introvert without becoming a sad old git? Three suggestions. The first, embrace it. There's no need to fight. About a third of the UK population is introvert. That's an awful lot of people. There are studies going on at the moment to discover whether it's genetic or learnt. But research shows that these ways of being exist all the way through the animal kingdom. From fruit flies to rhesus monkeys. Interestingly, when it comes to church leaders, about 58% are introvert. When you think about it, a lot of things clergy need to be good at: studying the Bible, praying for people who don't pray for themselves, counselling individuals, retreats. These are things that introverts find really attractive. Introverts are more likely to delay gratification, to learn from mistakes, to ask "what if." They love deep discussions. They want close friends. They ask you questions and then listen to what you say. They don't tend to be fussed about either fortune or fame. These are great things. Extroverts are more likely to take exercise, more likely to gamble, more likely to thrive in a team. And I'm afraid more likely to commit adultery. Extroverts can lead well, but so can introverts. They just lead in a different way. So set your heart on enjoying what you are. My second suggestion: find a cave. 
Not a physical cave, unless you're ten times more rugged than me, although that's not difficult. A metaphorical cave. In the Bible, places where things happen are significant. Exhilarating spiritual experience happen on mountaintops. Routine work in God's company happens on a plain. Dreadful things happen at sea. If God's planning to teach you something unforgettable, you do not want to be in a boat. But in the Bible, caves are places where God deals with people. They go in defeated or whimpering or dead. God gets to work. They come out revived. 900 years before Jesus, the prophet Elijah is in serious trouble. He's just pulled off a spectacular trouncing of worshippers of the god Baal. Very attention-grabbing, very public. It gets him powerful opponents. These are exactly the circumstances that leave an introvert exhausted or depressed. Elijah runs. At his most stressed point, as part of his recovery, he goes into a cave and spends the night alone there. And there he is, chin down on his wasted knees, and the wind's too windy, and the fire's too fiery, and the earthquake's too uh, earthquakey. But somewhere alone in the cave, he gets that fragile hint that God hasn't abandoned him, that whisper, that silence, and it revitalizes him. If you know you're an introvert, seek out what you need. If it's a Starbucks-shaped cave, take a Bible. If it's a chapel-shaped cave, take an iPod. If it's a countryside cave, take a dog. Take some time you can't afford and waste it. Call it prayer. Enjoy God. Enjoy yourself, literally. And my last suggestion. Learn to work within both temperaments, but do so knowingly. Being an introvert doesn't mean that you're incapable of functioning in the circumstances extroverts love, and vice versa, of course. No, it will be tiring and you'll subsequently need space, but be courageous. Everyone knows what a phenomenon alpha has been over 20 years. It's given people community in which to explore their inner lives safely. But we forget that for some people, this focus by churches on building community is the very thing they find difficult. The meal, which is supposed to be the highlight of Alpha, can be the hurdle to get over. But alongside this, there's been a trend which is equally remarkable. There's been a dramatic rise in attendance at cathedrals, about a third since the start of the century. These are places where you can come and go unnoticed, think without having to share, and meet God privately. I think we can guess what kind of person accounts for the draw of cathedrals. I've been reading the Gospels, trying to work out where Jesus fits on the scale. He was famously a party lover, which is a sign of an extrovert. But he had a compulsion to seek out solitary places, which suggests the opposite. Perhaps it's deliberate that we're not meant to know, just like we know almost nothing about his sexuality. It allows us all to encounter Jesus, thinking to ourselves, yes, this is how God dignified human flesh. He occupied flesh like mine, with a temperament like mine. So I'm known, I'm understood. If ever there was a man comfortable in his own skin, it was Jesus. Introvert, extrovert, I don't know. Embrace what you are. Know where to find a cave. Be prepared to work at what's needed, then enjoy what comes naturally. That's following the way of Jesus. And nobody can ask more of you than that. <laughs>